The wall mount idea, step one. Okay, I'm out here in my pole barn with all the wonderful non-dusty and, and yeah, the nice clean space out here. And what we did is we came out here, we uh, locked this board off to the correct width that I think I wanted. Basically, it was a 36 inch board. I went ahead and chopped it down to 32 inches wide. That seemed to be a good measurement that would fit both motherboards that I want, the power supply in the middle, and enough just space where any wires I need to mount, I can mount those and all that fun stuff. So uh, cut to the wit with that, and then I popped off with the router here that I don't know how to use and set the depth to, but we rounded off the, uh, the edges here, so we got some round edges on going on. Um, I left one edge unrounded, and uh, yeah, I'll talk about why later. Some of you might know, but some of you might not. So now we have to cut in the French cleat that we want. This will be the main support for holding this on the wall. So I'm getting ready to cut in the French cleat. Bear with me. We got our table saw blade set. So I can't quite get it to a true 45 degree angle where I want it because that bolt's going to hit the, the cutting deck right there. So now we just got to carefully cut in our uh, French cleat. So we're doing that next. There you have it. We now have a French cleat. So that's uh, ready. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hit this with some black stain because of course, I'm Info Guides. The Bat Cave, the Man Cave, the Everything Crypto Cave needs to look a little bit better than just plain wood. Doesn't that look pretty? Okay, I know it's hard to see here in my pole barn. The lighting's not the best. But you might be wondering, why do I choose stain over paint? Obviously, this is still highly wet. I did do the underside or the back side of these boards as well as the front. Uh, I'm a detail-oriented person. Yes, I know I won't see the back side once it's mounted, but I will know it's not done. So why do I pick stain over paint it's very simple paint will chip over time whereas stain even if the clear coat wears away the stain is in the wood it can't chip check it out here is our cheap open air computer wall mount case yeah, I said it. It's a case. May not look like it, but it is. Again, in part one of the video, we we're talking about how to do things on the cheap. And while the price of everything is going to come out for me to about $17, I must admit there are some additional costs, but I already had purchased some of these things. So for me, it was free, such as uh, the stain, I already had stain from my other trim work, trim work as well as the uh, clear coat that I put on these bad riders. So I already had those purchased from a different project. So I didn't include the price of those into this, mainly because I think it would be uh, lopsided because you know each one of those can do many of these projects. Uh, the can of stain, we're talking probably 12 bucks. The spray urethane, polyurethane coating, I think was about another 10 bucks. But again, I've already used those on tons of other things. So you can't say that's another $20 on the price. But there it is, guys. We're going to haul this up to the main room. It's dry. We're going to haul it up there. Well, here we go, guys. We're looking at a top-down view 
of our open air wall mount computer case board. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to actually mount, oh, here, let me get in. We're actually going to mount the power supply. We're going to mount, it's actually the second motherboard. Okay, so again, if you've been following these videos, I've got two Ryzen 9 5950 uh, CPU motherboards. Okay, so bear with me. Uh, we're gonna go through this process and I will probably speed it up in the edit. So just bear with me here. Okay, so there's no real rocket science to this. I'm just gonna line this up with the, uh, the I left one edge here flat. So we're gonna line it up with that. And we then just have these nice little wood screws here. They do have a little bit larger of a screw head to them. But if you can see here, they don't really overshadow the uh, mounting holes that much. Now, we don't need to mount or put a screw through every one of these. So I'm just going to do the four corners and call it good. So nothing special here, guys. I'm just going to mount those in with the wood, you know, wood screws. I do want to make sure that I have enough space here so that the video card tabs will hang over this front edge, like so. So. I want to make sure I get that right. I'm going to go ahead and put this in here. This isn't the final video card, but this will tell me and make sure I have my tabs in the right spot here. And now we're just going to, now we're not going to try to wrench this thing down so tight that we break off every metal pin underneath. We're doing just enough to hold it here. I saw the board flex a little bit too much, so I backed that off. We want just enough to hold it there. Now, because the power supply plug here, you know, that cable takes some force. I am going to put a screw in the middle back here. Those are just tight enough to sink into the wood and not really put too much pressure on anything else. Now the other motherboard will sit over here, but right now it's underneath there. So now what we need is the power supply. We're going to have a power cable here that I'm going to need to reroute this way. It's hard to explain before you see it, but it will be rerouting down through here. So because of that, I need to make sure I leave enough space for that cord to route through right here. Here they are. These guys, uh, these were like 79 cents at the hardware store. Um, yeah, so I picked up three of them. Now, I don't want them to be that visible, if at all possible. I want to hide them as much as possible. So what we're going to do we're going to put one under there, and then we're going to take this other guy, and we're going to put him under here. Now I am, it's hard to see, I am avoiding this rubber piece. So the metal brackets and the power supply will be offset a little bit, but it'll be sitting only on this metal case. So we're going to have those two like that. And I'm just for visual aesthetics, I'm going to try to line up the back of the motherboard with the back of the power supply. And I'm just doing that visually, trying to get that right. And I know my head's in the way. Bear with me. You know what? The motherboard box has a straight edge. It's called right here. Not perfect. But 
Good enough. So I'm just doing that for the straight edge. We'll go ahead and mount these two down here. Okay, so now we've got that piece in place. But now it's going to move around again. This side is up, that is down, so gravity will hold it there. So now how we get this held in place is quite simple. We take another one of these, we line it up right here, and we pop it on the back. Just like so. And that is going to apply the pressure we need so this won't move up or down. But there's an extra trick. And for those of you watching the full video and not skipping around, you get to see the extra trick. You need some double-sided tape. In this case, I have some double-sided carpeting tape. Some leftover from putting carpet in this room. So we need a couple of pieces of the double-sided mining tape. I'm going to go jump off screen here so I can cut a couple of pieces. Okay, we've got two pieces right here, about the size of that metal, and they're both stuck to my hand. So basically what you're going to do, again, this is double-sided sticky tape. I'm going to put one there, and we're going to drop the other one in place right there. Make sure that's nice and secure. And we'll pull off the other side of this tape. So now we have a sticky metal bar. This will not hold the power supply. But what it will do is make sure it does not slide around once we get it mounted nearly as much. It would be a lot harder for it to slide around. So again, we're just going to put that in place. So then, on our next bracket, we're going to do the same thing. Double side sticky tape here, and we're going to push it up against here, just to give it that extra little bit of uh, mounting support. So here we go. Another bracket, double side sticky tape. This whole roll of carpeting mounting tape only costs, I think, maybe a buck fifty. Uh, so it's dirt cheap for this stuff. There's other stick, double sided tape out there, but it all works the same. So again, what we're doing here is I'm binding a nice flat piece on the back of the power supply, somewhat centered. We're going to push that up. Now, I want to push forward on it, get a nice seat, make sure those two here back here are sticking nice and good. And now we're going to screw that down. Okay, there we have it, guys. So that tape also helps left-right movement. See that? So we're good. We're nice and tight. Boom! Done! Done, done. <coughs> okay. A. Okay, A. We're going to like, uh, take this salad rig here. This is the one that's been mining. We're going to come over here. We're going to have it join its friend right here. So we're going to go ahead and do that. As you can see, this one has installed windows. Now, I'm not, I haven't installed salad or anything like that yet because there's no reason to until I get a updated video card. So I'm in dire need of a NVIDIA 3060 video, uh, video card. Please send me one for free. I much appreciate it. Okay. I'm not going to lie. That did not go as planned. Long story short, I had to swap out my power supply because I was short a... Uh, eight pin to two four pin power CPU uh, power cables. I'm trying to see if there's a clear number on here that you can see. I mean, the brand here says 550. Obviously, this one here is a 650, which just means we're going to be burning a little bit extra power, but that's okay. It got it so all I now have 
a CPU power pin going over here to this CPU. I've got one coming over here to this CPU. That video card has an 8 pin. This video card has an 8 pin. And we still have our actual power that will get split. Let me go ahead and connect that. Otherwise, I'll forget and I wonder what. So technically, everything now. And here's another siren. I live in the country and I hear sirens almost every day. Anyhow, we got this. So now I'll show you the trick for what I'm going to do for these, these floppy video cards. Because I don't have any big mounting bracket or anything like that to hold this up in place. So I'm going to show you uh, the trick I plan to use. And it should be lovely. And it's so simple and easy. Got a couple ways I can do this. I got these screws right here. It lets me pull up a chair so I can show you properly. As you can see, this guy is leaning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull him this way. And I'm just going to put a screw underneath him here. That will hold him upright because, yeah, it's, it's that easy. Now, we also are going to do our double-sided tape trick, I think. So I think I'm going to put, I'm going to lift the video card, oops, lift the video card. I'm going to put a small piece of double-sided tape here. Then I'm going to put the video card in, push it up against that double-sided tape, and then pop the screw in on this side. Uh, to hold them, hold them up in place. There's a lot less there. And now I'm going to put a screw on both sides. Oh, look at that, guys. There you have it. So all I did is I dropped two screws here on both sides. And you can see it does move, but I'm putting quite a bit of force on that. And with that tape there, once it's up there and mounted, doing its thing, this thing should not have a problem. I could always drop a third screw here in the middle if I'm really concerned. This one I did a little different and I kind of like this better. Uh, now here you can see the wood is starting to split. Um, I really should have pre-drilled those holes, uh, but being my first wall mount of this type, homemade, I was wondering, but I didn't do it. This side seems to have split more than this side did. Uh, but either way, I'm not concerned with it. We're good to go. So next thing I'm going to do, even though it's extra work and pain, we're going to turn this on. We're going to check both machines. Make sure they're both powering up and everything. Once we have that proof, then I'm going to shut them down and work on the wall mount. We're back at my streaming PC. Hello. And let's go ahead and uh, test and verify our two salad. Well, this is the working salad rig. This is the future one. Let's go ahead and connect. That's that dual board over there. There you go, you can see. Uh... You can see salad pops up. I'm not worried about that because we're only shutting this down again. And then. One second, I gotta put this down so I can. Uh, properly control shift and launch. 
or shift click so I can launch the second one here. And so that was the first one. Let's go ahead and make sure that rig number two down there is coming up. Oh, look at that. So we have two different rigs on that board. They both boot up. So now it is time to work on the wall mount. This is taking a lot longer than I thought it would to go through this whole process. So I hope you guys appreciate this video. Uh, if you guys like this kind of content, please like, subscribe, leave comments down below. What do you think? What could have I done better, different? You name it. Leave me feedback. Okay. So now we're going to mount the French cleat to the wall. I'm just using some decking screws I had out in my pole barn here. So these are just decking screws. I just need to make sure I get this French cleat mounted into an actual 2x4. This is going to be the piece that holds 90% of the weight, if not more. So that being said, I also switched walls. I was going to mount it over here somewhere. I have now decided I'm going to mount it up here somewhere. I got a lot of vertical height in this room, so we're going to mount it up above this window. It's not going to be exactly how I'd like it because of the way the studs are in this exterior wall. Uh, when they built the pole barn, they did the, the purlings horizontal, so they're not vertical studs. They're horizontal, and then there's a two-foot gap vertically between each stud. So because of that, I'm a little bit uh, limited in my arrangement. All right. Bunch of failed attempts to get this thing wall mounted. Let me go over them quickly. Basically, it boils down to, by me switching what wall I was going to go on, and the uh, two by fours in the wall structure I chose being horizontal versus vertical. The mounting board that I had cut for the other wall really was not the right size for the wall I mounted to. So here's the big reveal. Are you guys ready? This, oh, by the way, disclaimer the wiring is not done yet. The wiring is just long enough. And we're almost to the point of turning this bad rider on. Drum roll, please. As you can see, we now have a clear bench top. And there you go. Here is the big reveal. Let me zoom in on this so you guys can see the close up. Man, that might be a little bit too close. So this is currently fully running. Uh, currently, I also have a actual VGA, eight, well, we'll call it the HDMI cable going from the video card on your left uh, down to this keyboard and monitor over here uh, so I can finish installing uh, Windows 11 updates and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the one on the right, I have a uh, HDMI uh, dummy dongle. I guess they're called and you can see here the power cable has the double splitter on it going to each motherboard if anybody out there let me zoom out a little bit if anybody out there knows somebody that makes a splitting cable that is like each leg of the split is 18 inches long uh let me zoom in again so the blue part that you see right there, that's a splitter, but they only sell them in like six inches long, which is bunk. Does anybody know of somebody that makes that little piece, the blue one, where each leg is 18 inches long? Because if so, then I wouldn't have to add, as you can see off of each leg, I have another 10 inch uh, extension. So I've got a lot of extra power length coming off the power supply because the splitter itself can't reach both sides. And I would rather go for the symmetry of both of them being side by side than worrying about, uh, you know, the length of that cable 
or extending a splitter. I know, let, let me know in the comments below, but this is the big reveal, guys. Let me know what you think. Putting this video together took quite a bit of time. Now, in the long run, obviously, I gotta order uh, a longer power cable that reaches an outlet. So this is your standard one. So I probably need an eight foot power cable. And just for aesthetics, I'm going to order either a spool of black Cat6 wire so I can make my own black cabling, or I'm just going to order a couple of uh, probably 15 foot uh, black network cables. So that way the network cables are long enough and you don't see the blue one. And once I get all that in there, then I'll of course zip tie it off to the side. So this is the reveal, everybody. Let me know, what do you think? How did this turn out compared to the original idea? Now, price point wise, uh, the, the physical board cost me probably, I think it was $14. The stain and the clear coat on the board I already had, but let's add in some dollars for that. So we'll say another, We'll, we'll say another six bucks. So that puts us at 20 bucks. And then the metal clips here that are holding that power supply up just by gravity and the sticky tape, uh, those cost like 89 cents each. And I use three of those. So we'll call that another three bucks, three bucks. So that's like $23. And the screws I have there, I also, uh, you know, I can't put the full price on that because even though I did purchase these, uh, I, I can do a few more yet. I, I have plenty more to do. All right, guys, this video is very long and took a, quite a while to splice all these bits and pieces together. I hope you like it. I hope you like this kind of content. Please, like, subscribe, give me your feedback. Peace.